Hello and welcome to the next Linux lecture where we'll be talking about a document preparation system called LaTeX. I want to start by talking to you about the Turing Award. Now, real scientists win Nobel Prizes if they're particularly prestigious and their work is going to be recognised internationally. But as far as computer scientists are concerned, the most outstanding achievement is something called the Turing Award. It's a prize that's given to an individual or a group of people for an outstanding contribution to the computing world. I want to point out two people who've won Turing Awards. In 1974, Donald Knuth was a Turing Award winner. Look, here he is here. Donald Knuth actually visited Glasgow around five years ago and gave a very interesting lecture. Then I want to point out to you, from 2013, Leslie Lamport, a more recent Turing Award winner. There's Leslie there. Now, Donald Knuth was the inventor of a document typesetting system called Tech. Leslie Lamport extended tech to make a system called LaTeX, a more advanced, uh, more sophisticated document processing system. So, what can we learn about these two people? Apart from the fact they both have rather primitive web pages, they're both outstanding computer scientists, winners of the Turing Award, and they've both contributed to document preparation systems. Let's have a look at LaTeX see how it works and hopefully you will find that although it looks fairly simple actually it's an extremely powerful tool. I hope soon you will be using LaTeX rather than Microsoft Word or LibreOffice or however you do your word processing typesetting at the moment. Right let's get into it. First of all we need to write ourselves a LaTeX document. Generally LaTeX documents go under the file suffix of .tex, tech. This file is called first.tech. Commands in later begin with a backslash. The first command is to say what kind of document this is. This one is an article. Then we'll say begin document and then end document. In some sense, later it's a little like HTML. You write a kind of script that specifies how your um, document is structured, and then you uh, run it through a program. For HTML, it's a web browser. For tech, it's the, the LaTeX system to produce a, a graphics file um, that uh, renders your source code. OK, so I'm going to start off with a very simple LaTeX document. And I'm going to say this is my first LaTeX document. I'm going to save this document and quit. Right, let's compile this. PDF LaTeX. First doc, press tab to complete. First doc, dot tech. And you'll see there's some output to the console, which eventually results in first doc, dot tech. Dot, sorry, first doc, dot PDF being created. I'm going to view this with the events command, which is a PDF viewer on Unix systems. Events first dot dot PDF is the name of the file. Ampersand is to say that I want to launch this process um, in the, the, the background. And here we go. This is my first LaTeX document. Right. Not terribly impressive, but there we go. Let's think about doing something a bit more impressive now. I'm going to go back into my document. I'm going to turn on syntax highlighting in Vim. And I'm going to add some extra commands. I've recorded this at double speed just because I can't type terribly quickly. So the first thing we're doing here is adding in a title and an author. These are separate macros. 
Then we're going to put in two sections, the introduction and the conclusion. This splits up the document quite neatly. The percent adds a, a comment, a one-line comment. We'll save the file. And then recompile it using PDF later. And then view the document with event. We zoom out a little, we see that we've got the title, author, date, two section headings, and the text as well. Let's go back and change a few more things. Turn the syntax highlighting on so we see what we're doing. Purple indicates latex macro. Green indicates text which will appear in the actual document. Now we're going to show the different font styles, italic and bold fonts. Also different font faces, typewriter font with text TT, sans serif font with text SF. We can also change the size of fonts. There are various different sizes. Backslash tiny is one of the smaller sizes. Backslash, capital letter H, huge, is one of the largest sizes. Let's have a look and see how this renders now when we compile the code in PDF LaTeX and view it. Let's zoom in. Now you can see the different fonts, italic, bold, typewriter font, sans serif font, tiny, and very large. Great. We'll go back to the document to do a little bit more editing now. This time I'm going to include some extra LaTeX packages. The extensibility of LaTeX is one of its strengths really. I've added the hyperref package so I can use URLs inside the document which will be live web links. This is a link to the School of Computer Science website. Another package is the Graphic X package, which I'm going to use to insert an image file. The image is called juice.png. It's a picture of the first computer that was installed at Glasgow University back in the 1950s. Just put the image file in this directory. Then we'll recompile and have a look at our picture. I guess there are a couple of things to say about LaTeX at this point. One is that, rather than using the command line, you might choose to use LaTeX in an online environment. There's a project called sharelatex.com. Here's its website. And effectively, this is like Google Docs, only for LaTeX. I'm going to log in quickly and just show you my account. So you can make a new project. And once you've created your project, you can go in and edit the LaTeX, which is here on the left hand side. And on the right hand side, you see a kind of preview of your document. So I can say text it. Here is a simple online document. OK. 
okay, then it gets saved automatically and when I click recompile, there we go, there's the empty code, which I've added in. So this is a, a way of generating LaTeX. Um, rather than having to install it yourself, you can just run it through this Share LaTeX website and look at this, you can collaborate with other people. So the same way that you can work with Google Docs, you can make the document public and allow other people to collaborate with you and simultaneously edit the document. Or you can talk about the document and so on. So a collaborative um, online LaTeX editor, sharelatex.com, might be worth checking out. I'm going to show you what happens when you make mistakes in your LaTeX document. Let's go back to first.tech and suppose this time we'd forgotten to end the figure before the end of the document. So can you see we have the begin figure but there's no end figure. Let's save and quit. When we try and run PDF LaTeX now, it will get confused. It does. Look, error, begin figure, ended by end document. The system hangs with a question mark, it doesn't know what to do. We're going to press X to exit LaTeX, and then we will go back to our document and fix it. G to get to the end. So let's put in end figure. Now, suppose we forget an end document. Again, the system will hang. So now we haven't got an end document in our LaTeX file. System gets all the way to the end, it doesn't know what to do. See there, we've got a star. It says, please type a command or say end. I'm going to type control C press enter, and then I get back to the question mark where I can say H for help, okay, and quit with X. X to quit, right, and then we go back and we'll fix the document up. G to get to the end, I to insert, end document. There we go, and this time indeed it will compile. PDF later. Okay, good. I'll just show you one more thing, which is what happens when you mistype a command. So here we go, suppose I don't spell section properly and try and compile. It will say there's an undefined control sequence. And it tells me what line the problem's on, so I can press X and go back and fix it. Great, so now we know how to fix some errors in our LaTeX document.